Hi, it's Lel from Made by Marley. Welcome back to our channel. Today's video is all about transfers. It's a transfer 101, how to get the best from your transfers, how to turn furniture really truly into furniture app using transfers so they don't look like transfers, so they work with the piece. So today, follow along when I show you how to do this. It's a dresser. It's got loads of colour, the, the transfers have been distressed back, it's got stamping, it's got hand painting, it's got um, palette knife distress, it's got it all in spades. So if you want to see how to do this, follow along. Okay, so this is the piece we're going to be painting today. Although today is all about transfers, we are going to have to do a bit of a paintwork underneath because they set the scene. So it's a pine dresser. Is, is well made. It's got these cute little drawers. Um, two two drawers at the bottom. Actually, no, it's got four drawers. It's got three in one and a cupboard. Um, bought it recently. Very cheap. Uh, we are going to turn this into something beautiful. Um, two of my favourites. My favourite thing to paint is dressers. Second favourite thing is the transfer I'm going to be um, using today. Um, and we'll get to the transfers. But what I'm going to do with this piece is, A, I'm going to go and get changed and put my, my painted clothes on. But also, it needs a good clean man. And I have just absolutely died laughing at the way of carrying this piece over because he said, um, it's a little bit dusty. And I said, it's quite complicated to undercoat. And he went, it needs a good clean. And, and then I looked at him and I went, just like you, Martin. <laughs> then we laughed all the way over. I'm old not, and dusty. Old and dusty. <laughs> <laughs> and complicated. Anyway, so I'm going to undercoat this with Annie Sloan's Oxford Navy. A very dark navy. There's no point showing you in the squeezy, but it's it's this. Will anyway. I will anyway. <laughs> it's this colour of navy. So the next time you see it, it will have had two solid coats of navy. I'm not going to labour too long on the paint too much so next time you see it i'll undercoat okay so this has had two coats of color just a brief offshoot because today is really about transfers but um if i was selling this piece i would give it another coat it's had two coats and it's looking pretty fine at two we don't need it to get any better from this stage but if it was you were just painting furniture plain i would do another one now uh, I've been trialing a little thing myself and I'm not saying that nobody else is doing this it's just that it's what's working for me and I'm liking it normally I would do one coat and then what I would do is get my water spray spray my brush dip it in the paint because when you try to paint chalk paint over the top of chalk paint for your second coat it's sticky your brush doesn't move the same way and I've always done it that way. I've never sprayed the furniture and done it that way. I've always sprayed my brush and did it that way. But um, I hit upon this thing recently, and I've been doing it quite a lot recently, probably off camera. And so hence the reason why I haven't really got to it in my head is, obviously, if you're going to go back to your brushes and your pots, always put them in a plastic bag. Your brushes stay nice and soft, and you can use them again. But I just happen to have this to show you. What I've been doing for my second coat is doing a half and half mix. So I had half my Oxford Navy, just slightly under half of water, stir it around and I'm painting it, the looser paint in the tub on the second coat. It's dreamy, goes on smooth. I like the look. I wouldn't water it down too much. I mean, maybe when I'm saying half and half, maybe that's a bit excessive. You would have to look yourself. Enough that your paint's not dribbling around and running off your furniture. It's still got, you know, like, it's still quite thick, but it's not as thick as it would be on the can. So that's just a top tip on painting and what I'm doing. And if you are just getting into furniture art, I'm sure everybody kind of knows this. But if you just keep all your equipment and things that you're using in plastic bags like this, then that way you can come back and use them. And one plastic bag you can have for about the same year. You just keep using the same one over and over again. I take these over to my paint sink, wash them out, bring them back over, put my bag to the side and then reuse it for the next project. Try and be environmentally conscious. Don't keep getting new bags and bags and bags. So, yeah, that's what I did there. Now, today is actually about transfers. So, what to do, how to get the best from your transfer. You're not going to just blindly paint your furniture and then try and make your, your transfer work. You have to have a solid, or at least your colours, down before you do it so that you know that it's all going to play nice your transfer is going to show up well it's going to make an impact there's all the reasons why 
So how do I do this? How do I go about doing this? So I have base coated in Oxford Navy, but the colours I am going to use are a little bit of a Goosebumps Blue, which is this colour. This, I wanted a yellow, but I wanted a more mustardy yellow. So this is Tilton with a little bit of burgundy in it, which just takes the edge off the yellow, dump, knocks it back a bit and makes it more mustard. So we've got our Busan Blue, we've got our yellow, yellow burgundy mix, uh, Amsterdam Green, which is obviously a dark foresty green, and red, so this is Emperor's Silk. These are the colours... I am going to be putting over the top of this. These are my brushes. I'm going to be also doing something new on camera today, which I, maybe I should have done off camera. Mm. Uh, I normally just blend with blending brushes, but today I'm going to try and make it all work with this big one. I've, I've never, I don't use a big brush like this to a blend new, it all. A new brush. So it's a new one. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trialing it out to see if it, if it's going to, if it's something I think I might could get into. You're going to have to see me getting into it as well, whether I like it or not. So that's that. So we know what my colours are, but let me just tell you why I picked these colours. So I did tell you at the beginning that it was a whole video of my favourites. Favourites because I love paint and dresser, but favourites because this transfer I'm about to show you is my most favourite transfer. I've always thought if I OD discontinue it, I'll have to buy them all, everything left in the world, just so I can keep them for forever. It is Wallflower. Now... You can suddenly now see my thinking, my blue, my green. Now, my green is a darker green than this green, but you've got to remember when I start putting it up beside the yellow, it's going to make a lighter green. The red. And this is just the backdrop. So, you look at your colours of your, your transfer and you go, what's going to play really well on top of... I'm not, I wouldn't just come along and put this onto this like this right now because that's why you really want to sell your furniture in the most amazing way. And I've told you this about transfers before. You need to set the scene. And there's a whole lot of scene setting before you even open your transfer. But one of the first things you need to do is get your colour set. So I'm not going to talk any more about the transfer right now. I, I think you can see that my colour choices, there's my yellow, I'll do it again. There's my blue. The yellow and this colour will make my green. I could have used a lighter green, but I don't want to. I want a, I want a darker green and my red. There is a white in this transfer, but I'm not, I won't be putting white on to the end and we'll be doing a wee bit of palette knifing because I haven't done that for a while. I'm going back to my roots. This is basically anything I've ever made with this just sells. So this is what it's in it. It's a whole load. I mean, I love wallflower just for its value. You can apply it all in one section, like these lovely people have done. I won't be doing that, so um, I think you'll get, you'll make your furniture more unique if you cut it up and we apply it in a way that we want to do it. So what we're we gonna do first about color choices, let's think of the colors we're using. Um, I just want to, I don't want to coat the furniture in the paint. I want a messy, watery, blend it all, these colors together. Think barge art. Think we are going to be doing some maybe a bit of stencil work as well before we put our transfer on or stamp work. You know, we're going to kind of set each frame. I'm going to, this is one frame. This is its frame that sits alone. And we'll make these three drawers one frame, bottom different, and we'll frame it all out that way. So let's start with this one because it's the biggest surface area and it's really your choice, but I'm going to kind of manipulate a few different colours into this anyway. So... What I'm going to do is I'm using a brush for each colour and I've got my water and I will be spraying onto the furniture with my big new blendy big boy brush, okay? Right, so I haven't got my mix mat, so in the absence of a mix mat, I'm just going to use the cardboard and mat and I'll show you how much I'm putting on right now to begin with. This is full, but I think there's a kind of ear lock in it that and my yellow's already in the palette very primary color esque at the moment you've got to remember when this goes into this what color will that make that'll make a sort of orange this will make a different shade of green and um, this will also make a shade of green as well so and how we manipulate it will work so i'm going to start let's just move these colors out of the way 
I'm not going to make you endure all of this. I'm just going to quickly do, do some of it just now um, and then I'll just do the rest off camera so that it's got a chance to dry overnight. So I'm going to start with my reds, I think. And I think I'm going to do something like, like this. You've got to be thinking about where your transfer is going to go. So I'm going to have one in here, one hanging maybe down from down there. And this could change and maybe some of it coming in from this side here. So that's that's this kind of rough plan at the moment. Something like that. Let's do that. And then maybe let's do... It does look very primary colours, yes, doesn't it? Ooh. Let's do something like this. Yeah, and then this blue, which I do want this blue to play quite a larger role than any other, other colour. I maybe should have said that because I'm going to have to bring it back in some way, something like this. And in the very centre here, I'm going to have some of this nice green. Yeah, I can tell exactly what you're thinking. Well... <laughs> well, they're thinking she's ruined the perfectly good dress. Yeah, <laughs> they probably are thinking that. Right, okay. So remember, this is the bad stage. This is the dog's dinner phase. This is not good and it's never going to look good because yeah. everything's got to happen to it. And right now, I want to blend them, but I want to keep some of the solid blocks as well. So let's just kind of start playing with this and see what we can come up with. I mean, I don't want to over blend them. I might have to add some more. Mm, thinking that I want a bit more solid something in the middle here. Let's just kind of do some of this over the top of here. I'm not sure about the brush yet. I'm going to give the brush a bit of a spray as well, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So basically what this part is, and that's the thing about this part, basically at this stage all I'm doing is playing with my colours and that is what creativity is all about. You're not born with it, it doesn't just, it's everybody's, it's just some people use that side of their brain and some people don't, it's just, that's just the way it is. I mean it's about how much you want to play around with things. Now, am I liking this? No, because I'm not liking, tell you what I'm not liking, I'm not liking this plum colour here. I want to eradicate that. I want to have more, more reds. So anywhere where I think it's too plummy, I want to get rid of that because that's not what I'm looking for. But I'm going to put some more red up in here. I'll try and get this side here to where I want it to be. But take it from red, take it as red. What I'm doing with the rest of the piece is pretty much what you're seeing now. I'm just having fun with my paint until I get it to where I want it to be. I want to bring some of this yellow back in because it's kind of lost. I think this brush is so effective that it's just blending it. It's just blending it. It's just, yeah, it's just really blending it. But I mean, I suppose that's what they're there for. But I was looking for a little bit more less blendy, I think. Yeah. So you just got to play around with it at this part. I'm, I'm not quite sure what I'll probably do with the handles. And I think probably they are going to get painty as we go around. Now, I did say the Abusson Blue is going to play more of a role. So let's just kind of, let's try and bring some of this back in here. Now remember, and this is the thing you have to remember. At the, at the moment you're going, this isn't all, this is awful. And it's not all blended in right remember what's going to go over the top of it and the thing is that's what you have to do here you have to kind of hold your nerve you have to hold your nerve and go how is this going to work on here right now i can see what i can probably see what you're thinking at home you're thinking right okay this isn't good but you just need to hold your nerve that's all you have to do and it'll all be good i want to put a bit more blue up in here and this is just now playing. All I'm doing now is I'm just getting it to where I want it to be. I've thrown it at it. And now I'm, in my mind, I'm just going to sort it out so it makes sense. I do want to have a little bit more. I keep losing my yellow and I want it back. In fact, you know what? I'm just going to... That, 
That big brush is, is very good at blending. It just blends it all the way. Okay, so the camera, the camera just died. <laughs> it was actually my fault. I have too much stuff. Too much stuff on our phone. Yeah. So um, where did I go? What did I do? Well, I kind of started moving over here. When, um, I got kind of a bit giddy while Matt was fixing the problem. But it's just the same thing. I've, st I've got this part here. I really like this part here. Uh, it's hard to explain why I like it. I just like it. The reds kind of going into the sort of almost burgundy and then going into the yellows, going into this. I love this part up here. I'm just working on this here. This part here looks a little bit like... Somebody once commented on my furniture and it was a look like this that I'd done and she said it was absolutely the most incredible thing she'd ever seen. But she said if she did that, it would look like she'd um, just been let loose with her kids' craft materials, which made me laugh because it, it's, it looks... It looks like it's messy, but messy on purpose, messy with purpose, you know, where it's where it's blending together. Like, this is why I know I like this part here and I like this part here. But if I think if you can look at this here, you know it's not the same. So I just need to get more of a sort of, I've, I've ditched the big brush. It's just too good at blending it all together. And I, and I don't want that. You're not wanting, you're not wanting to blend it almost. You're just wanting to run them together. Um, more of a sort of running them together as opposed to blending them all up and mashing the colours together. If that will cut, we'll revisit this brush, but uh, right, right now, no, not Thinking, today. Not today. It's <laughs> making it. It's making it too blendy. So let's just kind of what I've put some green here and I've got some red here and I've put my Busan blue down this side here. I'm just going to do this draw and then I'm not going to leave the point too much because I think that you probably understand. Um. So I really want to, if you look at the whole piece, bring in some yellow into this part here now. So I'm bringing this up into here now and down into here. And again, oh, and you can leave things like that on it. I I fully intend to, I fully intend to make quite a mess here. And I'm even considering once this is dry, coming back and spraying it. I, I want to kind of bring the, the Abyss on Blue, the, this colour here is the one, that really is going to kind of meld it all together. And I might come back and dry and kind of spray, put some of that in a spray bottle and spray some of that together. Uh, I'm not quite sure because I'm going for a specific kind of look with that. What I'm kind of doing with the handles right now, I'm, am I going over them or not? I'm not quite sure. Maybe I should have each one a sort of different kind of thing. Let's dip in the red now. I'm just going for it now. I'm just having fun because I'm not even cleaning my brushes or changing my brushes. I'm just doing it. So, no, I don't like that there. So let's just get that some of that off of there. I want to I wanna try and keep that. Well, I suppose I could have a patch of that there. Right, so I like round here now. Uh, but I need some more. I'll put some blue on this edge here. And up into here. Down into here. Oh, I'm keeping things like this because... There's going to be quite a lot of palette knife. There hasn't been such a, for a while, me just kind of like uh, using a lot of palette knife, making it look so, and it, this, because I'm doing transfers, this, because this is a good way of kind of showing what I'm, what I like to do. So you can see, let me just talk you through this again one more time, because I'm going to go on and do the whole piece, the sides and the top, this sort of style. So get your colours together. You get your colours from your transfer. Your colours always have to work with your transfers. You kind of just paint it and then go, oh, but it's not really going to, mm, they don't really play well together. So get your colours from your transfer first. Stay at your transfer. Pick your colours out. It's quite easy with Wallflower because the colours are quite obvious, but you don't have to. I mean, you don't have to make them obvious. You can make them different. You can pick all the different tones out of it. I mean, let's just, for example, let me have a wee look if I was going to do something different. You could pick out a pink. A baby pink, a light pink, a beigey colour, a burgundy. Um, probably better looking at the actual thing yourself. You could pick out a white, um, a very sagey green. So this is what I mean. Look at it as a whole and go, like, where are all the colours? And when you've got all the colours, then that's when you do your thing. So pick your colours, put your colours on, and then try and make it look... How would I describe it? 
Try and make it look messy, but it all kind of works. Deliberately so. Deliberately so, Martin. You're quite correct. Yes. Something like that. Play with your colours. There is no point me sitting going, you need this and it has to be at this angle for this precision. It's not going to work because right now, even when you see this dry, you're still going to doubt what I'm doing because you're going to look at it and go, oh, no, 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 no. When you start to introduce the transfer, it suddenly all becomes, oh, that actually does work. And, and, and it's about, I said this to somebody the other day, uh, it's not about being brave, it's about holding your metal. It's about knowing your process, knowing that, you, that you've worked it out and keeping your nerve keeping your nerve right to the end because so many people get halfway through or some people get to the stage and go, oh, no, 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 this isn't going to work. It's about holding your nerve, holding your nerve right to the end and then you, you've got the glory of going, oh, it actually all does work. I mean, okay, we could hold our nerve right to the end and go, oh, but no, it, it will, will work and that's what I'm trying to say. Just hold your nerve. I've read a few comments just now about it. I've tried that, but halfway through, I thought, oh, no. Halfway through, I sanded it off. Halfway through, um, I decided that I couldn't go back to it. You just have to hold your nerve. So I'm going to go away now. You're not going to see me do it because it's not about real paint. It's not about paint this week. It's actually about transfers. So I'm just going to go away now and I'm going to do the whole piece ready for the transfers. I'm going to be doing a little bit of stamping, but I'll talk you through the stamping as well and why I'm putting stamping on it just to do kind of like bring it more into a sort of bar jar sort of what I'm imagining in my head. So um, I'm just going to go on and do that now. Okay, so this was where we left off um yesterday so it's had all its different colors as i said to you there's no real right or wrong reason i think it's just about having fun i didn't over blend them i meshed them together then what i did was i got my boots and blue added plenty of water to my brush and just pushed it up on the top to give these runs did the same on the front just pushed and run and then if i didn't like the run like for here and here what i did was i used my water spray i also did some splatters like this not a lot of those and this is what we have ended up with now i know at, at this point in time you're still going this is awful but it's okay just have to stick with it so i'm just going to get set up there's two ways what i would normally do is put any um stamping detail and then the transfer but i'm going to be putting the transfer on first because this week is all about transfer so let's get them down first we can always stamp up to the edge and round um our transfer once they're applied i, I guess there's no wrong or right reason either it's just this is the way i'm choosing to do it because it is really about transfers today so i'm just going to sit down and we'll start getting on with it okay so as you can see i'll get, I'll get matt into just homing can you see these little parts of crackle now, I could have did this in various different ways. I could have used a crackle medium. I've got, I've got those, but I didn't want to do that. Um, I wanted to use a stamp. So I'm using this stamp from IOD. Um, I can't quite remember the name. It's like Crackle Lure, which was the big one. This is the one that's got the four on it. I will... I will I'll link it. Ma I'm, I'm looking at Martin from, <laughs> from behind the camera here. I'll link he'll it. jump in. So I've, I've got a grey stays on ink, not a black. I uh, didn't want it too heavy. And all I've done is, I'll just show you here, is I've just kind of like touched it up. You don't want to run your hand across it all the way and stamp it the way you'd normally stamp a stamp. It would be too much. You're just like picking little parts, kind of like tippy-toeing your finger across it and pulling it off. And that's probably enough. So I've done that. I mean, you can do things like that on your handles, but I'm not quite sure what's going to happen to the handles. Oh, I quite like that. Right. See, this is what I mean about having a go. So maybe that's a bit much on that one, but we'll fix it. So this is dry. It's had a, a um, where I'm wanting to apply my transfers has had a sealer. Um, things to point out, I've put it back together for context to work out how, when you put and apply a transfer to furniture, if you hope to sell it, only use one. If you if you start using two pieces on on a, a two transfers on one piece of furniture, you're never going to make money at, at, at furniture art if you kind of do that. So you've got one booklet to do this whole piece. Now we can work this out by we're not going to have anything on the backs because that will detract from what they display. So there's not we don't need anything for there. I don't intend to have 
on the two sides of the back I don't have anything I don't intend to have any transfer there there might be a little bit spills over onto the sides some on the top and this so really this is the part we're working on but put it together first just so you know if there's anything left over we might do some elements along the drawers because that's just what we might do now when I worked with Martin and he did his table I showed Martin a really easy way to separate transfers by using a sharpie pen it's okay to put a sharpie pen over the top of this plastic it's not going anywhere so again it's the same sort of deal we'll get to how you use it in a minute so say I want to I, I'm just I'm doing this fresh this is my brain doing it live for you there's not a there's nothing different um I'm not I haven't pre-planned this I'm just looking at what I've got so I think the first page this one here and this one here I'm going to use straight away so I'll tell you how we can fix that one in a minute so we are coming oh my sharpie doesn't really work but just that one there is the shape we're going to cut out on this one we're going to ignore this one because we can put this one back together with something else but we're going to come around here and we're going to cut this one out so let's cut these out first now using a transfer you rip it off of the page these are iod transfers they come in a booklet if you use maybe an older iod one you maybe still get them on a roll redesigned by primas come in a roll um What's the Australian company, Marty? Um, I like the name of it. The They do transfers. What are they called? Are you thinking Hocus Pocus? Hocus Pocus. I think they're South African. They, South African, sorry. My apologies. They come in a roll as well. Um, so depending on how you, you start, it'll either be in a booklet form, which this is much easier, or the roll. Be very careful when you're unrolling a redesign by Prima roll. It, sometimes they stick on each other and it can be... Let's, we can talk about transfers as we go, because this is all about transfers. It, you always, people always like, for some reason, my opinions, I don't know why they matter, but my opinions are this. I like all products, but I think everybody knows I'm always, I'm always, almost more always wedded to IOD products. I just love IOD products. I love redesigned by Prima products as well, and Hocus Pocus, I love them all, but why do I particularly like IOD transfers as opposed to now this doesn't count for full ranges like stamps and molds i'm not talking about this just just purely being objective on this from me from my point of view is there is less of a halo i'm just going to cut this out while i talk because if not this is going to be a really long video and you don't want that um there is less of a halo on an iod transfer than there is on a redesign by prima transfer redesign by prima transfer it is slightly wider Transfers, if you are not careful, no matter whose brand you use, can look a little bit plastic and stuck on your furniture. And I'm going to show you ways to make them look less like that as we get further on to this. So, Halo, what is it? When you buy your transfer, transfers are, they're sticky on this side. Can you see that stickiness? Can you see this tiny little rim? get Martin to focus and don't sorry I know my nails are I mean that's shocking but you know see this little rim around the edge here I'm gonna try and get really close yeah see if you can get really close Martin yeah yeah this tiny I won't move my finger but the tiny little rim that goes round the edges that is called your halo you can see it's hardly anything it's marginal with an iod transfer with a redesign by prima transfer it's quite far out it's here and when you stick that onto your furniture you get a thick clear it's always going to be if you are some kind of i stand back and i go ah we can eradicate it and you've seen me do it with redesign by prima transfers you can get rid of it you can make it bed down and you can make it almost only you would know but if you come along solidly paint one piece of furniture decide to put your transfer on the way it says on the instructions on the back in one big piece you run the risk a of everybody does things like that so you're not going to be any different you're not going to be unique but also you have to think of all the little things that make it look these are developed to give you a hand painted like somebody's hand painted something when they haven't so the giveaways you have to be mindful of the little giveaways and the giveaway for me one of them is the halo anyway that's halos 
cut out. We've cut out. We did our Sharpie. We know that this is the, one of the first pieces that we're going to use. I need to cut my other one out just because you want to make this work as much as you can across your furniture. You want good value. And if anything, and I have done this before, you really want to um, end up with some left over because you want to be able to get what I would say one and a half of full project and a little small out of a transfer. You have to make it work for you. If not, it's it's not viable. It's not financially viable for you because your piece might not sell instantly. So you've invested your, how much, man, I don't even know how much. I, well, they're, they're in the region of about 45 pounds. 40, so, about 45 you know, pounds. So, I, don't I mean, know what that works in the States, but, you know, 50. $50, what I $60. do, my mass logic is, I just say fifty pounds. I just round it all. I round round all my pricing up from start to finish, in always a little bit more. My time is always a bit more. My pain always a bit more. I always put a little bit more. So I just say fifty pounds before I start. You've bought your piece. You've got your pain. You've had your transfer. You have to make it work for you. So. Don't be going crazy with your transfer because if you just stick a whole transfer across the front, you've got nothing for the sides. You have nothing to add any accents to make it work. You have to cut it up. It's the only way. It's the only way you'll look different. It's the only way it's going to be unique. And it's the because nobody else is going to cut it up the way you cut it up. You can cut it up whatever way you want. The drawing the line will help. I mean, if not, you're just watching me doing like, I, I'm kind of like Edward Scissorhands. I just hack away at it and stick it on. And Martin's seen that many times. But when I taught Martin how to do the transfers, that, that's what I did. I sat with him going, in your mind, look at, do you remember that, Martin? Look at yeah. each shape, right? So we could draw a line around there. And you don't want to be cutting through flowers. So we've cut this up, but we don't like this edge here. What, what What's going on here? Well, first of all, we need to know positioning. So positioning. The only thing I would say, um, just sorry to interrupt. Well, yeah, because you're no, a newbie. No, I'm yeah, not. exactly. Was the, when you're cutting it up, be mindful of where those halos are. Because when sometimes when you're cutting out quite tight in on things, you can cut through the halo and that is a problem. So That's, you have to be careful. That, do you know he's a... He's a doll, isn't he? He knows <laughs> he he's he's right. If you I've done this, it's not so difficult with IOD. Remember, you have all of this sticky surface area that's going to stick. But to get it started, if you cut past this little edge here and you've you've cut it from here, it's a tougher, tougher runoff to get it to do. So he is correct in what he's saying. And I think you hit upon that, Martin, didn't you? Because yeah, I did. I wouldn't have had a problem putting those on. But Martin, as a newbie, who'd never even applied a transfer before, and he did a great job on his table. Well, I was trying to cut out lots of little little flowers and things like that. And, and they That's were right. all quite tight together on the sheet. And I, yeah. and I did cut through some of the halos, and they were more difficult to apply. And I think maybe off camera, I had to maybe come along and fix a few things. <laughs> That's okay because it's all your own work. Yes. So um yeah, so this here is the part, obviously, somewhere in the booklet is the part that goes a, that butts up against that if you wanted to apply it as one. We're not gonna do that. So we we need to make things like this and things like this work for us. Now my the old me would have just sliced that off, stuck it to the side and made it work somewhere else, but we can I'm gonna show you how to do this. So positioning. I do want to, I have got an, I've got a mood board sitting here, but I don't want to show you the mood board because the mood board will throw it all. Uh, uh, this is not in any way, shape or form. This looks, this mood board looks slightly folk arty, but if you can see some of these florals, which are not the same florals of that, that I'm working on, but they're, but you can see, I do have a lot of red roses in play that you, you kind of get what I'm, my mood board doesn't reflect where my brain is going, so it's not really going to entirely show you where it's going. But um, I have got a sort of... I, I know where it's going, and, it, and I want to have it that I do put some stamps and things around it. I've gone off on a 40, Martin. Please tell me to stop if it gets too much. Yeah. Um, I do intend to put stamps, and I have been looking through them to make this all, you know, really sing... So, but so our position is 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 quite important. So, let's have a wee look. I kind of wanted. I don't like things. 
I don't know why. I wouldn't want something in here going to nowhere. Things have to be grounded off an edge or something, unless you're just doing center pieces. That's different. But this, because of the way we're using it, goes nowhere if I do it like that. So I really have to think about if I cut it straight here, whether it's a straight design and it's running down this edge. Uh, I need to hold up my other piece and try and get an idea of where we're coming. I don't want it to end up looking like a miss, a mod podge of not thought out shapes. So there is that thing of, see, my initial reaction was to have this running down this side, which I think I will do. I'll have flowers running down this side and that is the way I want this. This here, I don't know whether I try and find the other part of this, which I think is this yellow one here. This, I think, yeah, if I look at that there, I don't really want to start cutting that big yellow one out there and I don't really do it. Well, then I'd have to bring this down. Sorry, there's a whole load of thinking while I'm doing. But I'm button up against a handle. But handles would make it a little bit complicated to show you. And maybe that's a good thing. Because in general, you wouldn't have your handles on your piece. But because I'm hand painting my handles into my piece, I'm working around that. So you would probably be smart to get your handles off if you're a newbie. But I'll and show they, you. And these might be coming off in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Actually, do you know what, Matt? Instead of <laughs> I was actually just going to show them how to cut round it and apply it, but maybe I'll just whack that handle there off. So, yeah, I think, I think, I think this shape here. I'll what we'll do is we'll get a sharpie and I'll just show you what I'm going to get rid of. So I'm going to cut onto the line on here, right? Can you see this, Matty? Mm -hmm. But when I go to cut this one out the next time, what I'll do is I'll cut that like that so that that odd shape isn't isn't there anymore. So I'm going to come around here. I'm not going to show you how I'm going to cut. I want to... I want to keep this leaf. But, however, I don't want the next one. And I don't want that stem. Yeah. I'm going to go away. And I'm going to get... I am going to get Matt to remove this handle. I think it's going to be easier to show you because what you would in, what you would ideally do is put your first part on with your second part while it's still in the plastic. You'd cut down, cut a small semicircle on both sides, put it on, and apply it that way. But that is is that that's just a little bit that's too. That's just you being fancy. That is. That's just a little. Oh, I'm not trying to be fancy. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, maybe that's a little bit too complicated when we can just remove the handle. Yeah. So we'll do that, right? So I'll just cut these two things out. And then we'll get to how you app, how you properly apply your transfer. Yeah. Okay, so I've got a reasonable layout. I've got the two parts that matched up. I still have to work out what's going to happen here. Um, that's okay. Not worried about that yet. It's not good to keep on forward thinking when you just need to make a start. And I think sometimes just problem solve as you go is maybe a better solution. Now... Oh, years ago when I first got my first transfer, I watched other people do it and they used to cut at drawers and all of these things. I want this to end up looking like it's had a bit of a life. I'm going to age it. I'm going to put stamps on it. I'm going to do lots more things to it. So I like the sort of, I like it when it cracks. It adds, it doesn't, that's that thing about it doesn't look that plastic anymore. Uh, so I am not going to cut this up into sections, for example. But if you wanted to do it and you were wanting a slicker line, use your grid line to cut along there. Apply that piece first. Cut down here where the drawer ends and apply that piece. And apply it in flat sections as you go just by using your grid line. I won't be doing that. Um, I'm not teaching you bad habits. I'm just teaching you the way I'm in. Mean, there are, I think, maybe videos of me when I've been a little bit more, you know, this is, I'm cutting it up. But for this, I'm doing it this way. So I've got a sort of rough idea. Now, transfers are actually very simple. You just peel off the back like that. In your transfer, it comes with a little transfer tool. It's a little plastic transfer tool. Let me also, and I'm not berating other brands, but let me tell you the IOD transfer tool is the best transfer tool. And I'm going to just quickly whip this top edge off. I'm going to have to flip my glasses down in a minute because I don't actually know what I'm cutting. Um, 
their transfer tools are good for other things as well so it's good to have a lot of them so i want it off center and i want it right up the top i want it over but i don't want it too much over my handle so let's just do something just want it because i don't want that center of the the rows this this part here to be obscured by my handle so how would i do it i would do all flat surfaces first so this flat piece of the drawer now what i do first is i do a sort of running a run a run over sort of pass so on this flat piece only because we know this is oh we don't want to do that on this flat piece only i'm just running over here we can see that this part over here is kind of reasonable flat and then what i start to do is i start to work in and kind of bend first so i'm bending into that gap you can see me bending into the top bit of the drawer yeah and then i push this part down you just do it in stages the thing about transfers is is the thought of getting too overwhelmed i remember the first time i put one on a i was so worried about the money that i'd spent on it and i thought it was going to ruin it and i had cut it up it, i tell you what which one it, it doesn't matter but i cut it into so many pieces that i was a bit concerned i'd never be able to put it back because i hadn't seen anybody else cut them up and so i was terrified that i was doing it wrong but just take a breath take a breath take a breath and do it slowly slowly and methodically so i've got my crack filled in that doesn't sound good so i just want to have a wee look at this just to check that this part up here is done so i know that this part is here done where well, you've got a little bit of an ear pocket here if you kind of do you kind of bring it down and then you just start rubbing like fury but not too fast so i'm working on these edges down here you know it's transferring. You can see this is bright red and this is clear. Where it's clear, it's transferred. Now, I like to keep it down and transfer it down. You see a lot of people kind of lifting it up like this and doing this kind of thing. I like to keep it down flat. I like to go over it and 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 over it. That's why it takes much longer. I'm not going to go any further onto this part down here. So... You can see that that there's, just get this part on here so that I don't, at this part for some reason, I don't know why it's not wanting to transfer, but we'll get back to that. Now, let's see where we're going. Make sure you're not missing any. If you miss any, it's not the end of the world. Just go back over it again. I keep missing, I don't know why this edge isn't wanting to stick. But I think what I'll do is I'll maybe come back. I think it's because it's pulling the paint off. Coming down here. I only want to get it kind of not much further than this because I haven't done the bottom part, remember. Right, so now you're doing the same thing again. You're going underneath this part here. Underneath it. Then onto the flat part again before you get to the top of the cupboard. This part here is all flat. So we can get to this part. I'm just going to take that around the corner. I can't actually see. There we go. Just get that going around the corner first. And then this part on here. In and around the hinges. You can make it go over the hinges as well, just by transferring it over your hinges, I think is always better. As I said, I'm okay with the cracks because I'm going for the sort of vintage, vintage look. Let's try and get this leaf on here. And let's see if we can just run that end. I'm just going to have to... I'm concentrating so you're, you're not getting me talking. There we go. That little edge on here. Remember, if you've got bits hanging out like this, do these first because if you start pulling the rest down, you'll 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 lose this part in your in what you're doing. Going round here. There's a gap there. We know that's where our cupboard is. And this is how you apply transfers there is no 
Oh, well, there's nothing really difficult about it. Um, you just have to keep, you know, like um, working away, working away, working away, working away. And uh, making sure that you get it all transferred onto your furniture. And that's really it. There's not, like, the cutting it up bit is the tricky part. The designing where you're going to put the design is the tricky part. I understand. And I mean, I think if people are watching this for the first time, I understand. So you've got a transfer. You think there's quite a lot of money. Whatever, whatever end up making the mistake, whatever goes wrong. I'm not sure what's happening behind there. And I think I know what's happening behind there. I think it could be moisture behind my door because I did a lot of water. Hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll manage to work around that, but not good. But these are the little things that we can fix and I can show you how to fix them. Oh, it's like I'm doing some sort of the exercise. Right, let's see. Let's get this part here to come down now. Now I'm not going to make you watch me do every <laughs> single transfer on this piece of furniture. Uh, you don't want to hear me puffing and panting, but I am going to talk about positioning, and I am going to get Martin to come back every so often, just until we've got them all on. But we'll talk about ceiling. We'll talk about aging. We'll talk about distress, and I'm just going to leave that part up there. Let's. Just see what we've got here. I'm concerned here because of this moisture that I can see. Transfers will not go on in moisture. The only thing I could think of is there was a whole load of water speed in that and maybe it's got up in under the seam of my furniture. So let's, let's just see how I'll fix this. Huh. I don't know where the moisture came from. You can see it. You see the moisture? How that ended up transferring onto there, I have no idea because normally we don't like moisture. I'm going to tuck that part under there. Um, just kind of, because you want the next part to join up. So let's have a wee look. I'm just going to get these sharp scissors. Quite often I do it with my nail. And I'm going to show you a wee. Can you see that moisture there? I'm showing you the completely wrong. That shouldn't be like that. Um... Let me get a cloth here. I have to investigate where it's actually came from. But it seems to have adhered fine. Must have been in the drawer. It must have been in the bottom underneath the drawer and I didn't... I mean, it's been sitting for more than a day. And each coat has been left. It must have been up under that drawer, I think. And I didn't check that. Naughty me. But I didn't think I had to. I mean, although the temperatures in the stable are colder. Now, burnishing. We've transferred it. Now we need to burnish it on. Okay? So, not the black, the front grid that's on the outside because it, that actually wears off and you'll end up rubbing that onto your piece. This this side, the opaque side opposed to the shiny side. Take a little piece of this and then it's just worth your while going very slowly over your transfer slowly 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 in little circles burnishing it all down burnishing it on anywhere where there's little parts i just use my nail quite often if i find if there's a piece that i want to do in here i fold it and i think i've shown you this before i put my two edges in and i go back and forward like that it doesn't matter about things like that because as I said we're wanting this to look like it's been on here for a long time and that's the secret to transfers so that's on there so basically with my next part whatever my next part is what did I do with it um I think it's is it this part what did I do with my other part oh it's sitting up here so my next part is just a continuation of I'm not going to do it on camera. I'm just going to show you where it goes. Because what I'm actually going to do with off camera in a minute is open up that drawer and find out what the problem is. And then I can explain what the actual issue was. So now what you're doing with this one is... You're making it join up, but it's kind of tricksy for me because I've got... This isn't the one, Matt, and I don't... Oh, because I'm too far over. No, it isn't. 
Why did I think this was the one that matched up? Because you folded it round. The yeah, right door, I think so. so. I think because I folded it round, it's just not. That's it. I'm going by this leaf here, though. It doesn't seem to make any... It doesn't really matter, just as long as it looks okay when it's all put together. I think I'm going to... If I have to add things to this, I will. Yeah, let's just do something like this. And we'll work it out as we go. I'm going to do something like this. If I have to cut a wee yellow piece off something else, I will. So with this one, when the, because there's an edge, I'm going under the edge. I'll get to this part in a minute. So I'm going to... I'm going to um, apply it to this side and then I'm going to fold over and get this edge done because we still have to work out what we're going to do here anyway because it can't just have a drop off. It can't just have a straight line. Okay. Okay, so Matt is kind of showing you what the front looks like in context with everything else. So you're not just seeing this much. You're seeing this is the front. This is all right now I'm going to be putting on the front. Right, that's all it needs because there is going to be detail work where I'm going to kind of separate it out into. Uh, I was going to initially this make one frame, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make it two. So my sort of stamp work is going to come round into different squares, I think. Now, I spoke about. Next thing, I need to tell you this. So now what you need to do is you need to look at what you've got left and go, how much do I want in each side? So I always like to keep a full page per side. I mean, I'm pretty much going to call that a page. I'll probably only use this part. And let's get our Sharpie back out again so I can show you. This would be part two of this part. So let's just cut this out just so we're all on the same page, how I would work it out. So be mindful that you don't cut off anything. So let's see. Left side, right side, yeah? So let's set that one up on there and that one up on there because then you're not going to run out. We know that that's our sides covered, okay? I've Any little pieces and parts, I've just stuck up. Oh, see across those drawers right now? I've just put, I'm just starting to kind of, because I've got some kind of little flyaway sort of leaves. I'm going to try and make that work along there. Anything that you cut off, just stick it for the little parts. I try and separate it for the little parts. So we know that, the front is done, the two sides are done. We know we're not having anything on the top, but this panel up the top, we are. So what do we have left over? I think maybe something like, probably this and this, we'll do the top. So we'll set that to the side so we know that that's covered. And the rest probably, when I've got quite a lot left, this is what I mean, you should be able to do a large piece of furniture. This is what I think sometimes, I think it's not good value to pick quite a small piece and put one transfer across the front. A, it's a small piece, so how much are you going to... People see worth and size, so they're not going to go, well, that's worth that, and you've put your £50 in. I know it's not quite £50, but you've put your £50 worth of transfer on it. Suddenly, your margin, your ability to make money is going down and down and down and down. Whereas the way I'm showing you, separate out, because you, you don't need to have it across. And you know what I'm like, I like more is more, but when you're doing all your work underneath and all your paint and then you're going to stamp it, you're bringing it all together, which means you're having to use less. So you're spending, you're spending a wee bit more time, but you're spending less money on your transfer and you're going to have plenty left. So what I'm going to do is I am probably going to maybe possibly take one more sheet and all this other stuff here, I'm just going to be putting away. That'll probably be enough to do two smalls. If I don't use any of this, that's probably enough to me, you know, just get a fair amount done. Yeah. So separate it all out. And the reason why I say and ask me how I know separate it out, because if you've ever done it and you think, it's okay, I've got a whole full sheet for that size and you get to the end and you go, oh, I haven't, I've used it. So just keep it all separate. That's what I do. Now, we've talked about, we've, we've already, we've shown you how to cut it out, how to pick a part to cut out, how to position it so it works. We've talked about what goes underneath it. We've talked about how to use the transfers. We've talked about, don't touch this part. Do not stick your fingers on there. No. If I stuck my fingers on there right now, it would pull the design off onto my stick fingers. Not all of the design. There would just be four finger marks with holes. Don't stick your fingers on it. Storage, keep them in. Not. I don't keep mine out in the stable. 
it's not good for them out here too damp i keep them indoors um best place for them when the temperature in the drops warm. in the warm i mean in the summer i sometimes keep them indoors but in the winter no keep them in keep them in your house keep them nice and dry they don't now i was going to tell you about this because i was just about to say they do not respond well to water i don't know what it was the only other thing I can think of is I did kind of quickly open everything up. I still have to, I do all my cleanups of my edges at the end. So I hadn't obviously opened this and looked at it appropriately. There was a pool of water there that when I squish, because once I did my paint effect yesterday and it was all dribbling down, I just hammered a whole lot of water over it just to kind of bend it down. Must have got some water in there. But the good thing is, and the saviour was, the water came over the top of the transfer as it was transferring, not the water was underneath. Transfers do not transpose onto furniture if your furniture paint isn't dry, it's damp, it's cold, it hasn't been sealed. Now, there's a big debate here. Best practice, I'm not even going to tell you not bad, I'm not going to tell you bad practice. Best practice is always, always seal your furniture before you put your transfer on. It gives it something to stick to. You'll have to, of course, seal it over the top at the end and we'll talk about sealing, but uh, I quite often... If it's hot and in the summer, I don't seal it. I just put them on. But I wouldn't do that. I think if it's your, you're just getting into transfers and you want to do it right. Plus, it gives you a little bit of extra tooth having a little bit of sealing underneath. It sticks to it. So best practice. Got to teach you right. Okay, so I have here. I might put my glasses on. Two thousand grit. It is. It's. It's really. It's not. It's just hardly anything it's it feels soft and kind of almost velvety it's very soft just need a little part for this now is it best Marty if I go to this side or this side it's whichever one you want I'll go to this side now we're gonna work on our halos can you see that but what it's also doing is it's just just pick picks it's just kind of giving it see that it's what it's actually doing in reality is just taking the paint off the transfer but it's a really good way of sort of bedding it down and just just kind of aging it almost you kind of you see suddenly how those edges seem more more than one with a piece i'm trying to get a part where maybe the light is with a halo like you see this little part up here it's worth doing these things just it's a bit like you know like in nature where there aren't any straight lines in nature it's the same with this, with yeah. the, with the uh, halo. If, when you disrupt that straight edge of the halo, all of a sudden you don't see it anymore. God, man. You're not only a wordsmith this morning, <laughs> but, but you're you're throwing down, what is it the, young, the youth say? <laughs> you're speaking the truth, eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Talk, talking, <laughs> talking in truth today. <laughs> yeah. Can you see what I've done there? Now, I've, I've consciously did this around here because... Obviously, as well, if this has a hand-painted design on it, the more you rubbed up against this through the time, it would rub these parts off. I like that little bit there, but it, unfortunately, it's stuck back down. Right, so this is what I'm going to do with all of my transfers. I'm just kind of giving it a little bit more of a it's-been-on-there vibe. Happy with that. Good show. Going to do with all of them. Once I've done that, I've, I'm just going to, we'll do one more round. We'll do it on the top here. We'll do one more round of me applying a transfer just one more time so you know I'm going to get on. And in the sides, I'm probably, and I'll show you them once I've done them, just a patch maybe from the top down and one from the bottom up on the other side. And then we'll, I think I'll tell you what we'll do together. We'll do this top band at the top. That'll be quite interesting. So we've done, we've crossed the board on inlays, I mean, sorry, on transfers helps if I get that right there is nothing else apart from what I have to come to when I'm sealing now another thing as well you can do is you can paint over the top of these if you wanted to kind of give them a bit of distress you could dribble paint over them you could just paint bits out you can paint over the top of transfers you can apply transfers over the top of gold leaf do you know that you can do that uh, you can apply them over texture they work fine over texture if anything I quite like them over a whole load of texture because it kind of gives them that more cracked look that I like. Uh, what else can you do? Put them on glass, ceramic. Be careful if you put them on glass. Oh, <laughs> yes. That's quite right. 
when you go to apply the word glass, instantly. be very, very mindful <laughs> that your position is right. Have it position right. There's no Do not second, move. There's, there's no, no second, second goes. It is stick so well. That, and you go, oh, no, that's not what. I mean, Martin and I are laughing because. Yeah, uh, ask us how we know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're kind of like, oh, right, this is perfect. Oh, it's halfway, it's stuck in it. Oh, and you go, oh, well, I'm just going to have to commit to that being a little bit That's like exactly that. where I meant to put it. Yeah, that's fine. I'll do some juice round about it and we'll call it good. No, be very careful with glass. Mirrors is exactly the same as yeah. glass. If you're putting them on glass and you put them on mirrors, clean them with some, um, what am I trying to say, Martin, white uh, methylated spirits, any sort of, uh, what did you use for your hands in COVID? Uh, alcohol. Yeah. Uh, how could I not remember the word alcohol? <laughs> any sort of alcohol cleaner, clean your glass, make sure it's eat, eat, squeaky clean before you apply those. So I think I've touched on what you can put them on. Oh, you can also put them on fabric if you paint them. I don't know if you've seen me oh, a few videos back. I did a lampshade, the dopamine lampshade. I applied um, transfers on just onto fabric, just painted the fabric first, did the usual. Didn't even seal it before I did it, just put it, did I, did I? I don't know, I'd have to go back and watch the video. No, I don't think I did. I think I just, you know, put them on and you work some fabric. They are a really good uh, way to make you, like, kind of raise your furniture game. If you think about you doing something a little bit left field and a wee bit different. I mean, I'm kind of mixing two styles here. I'm mixing a sort of vintage sort of pattern along with this whole sort of watery, distressy, that's more modern-esque. It's going to have some stamping on it. Uh, it's going to have some aging, so it's all going to come together in a nice way. But I think we can put transfers to bed now. Please ask me any questions in the comments. If you leave me a comment about transfers or anything you think you're stuck on, I think the best thing to do with transfers is dive right in and have a go. Yeah. I think you you may go in your head, I do not want to make a mistake because I've, I've outlaid the money. And I think that was my biggest worry when I started. But... Um, I don't think you can. I don't think you can get it wrong just if you follow what I'm saying. Just as long as everything's dry, you've sealed it, you're happy with your positioning, there is no wrong. There is only what you like. So if as long as you feel, if you cover the basics of good application, then, then that's all you need to worry about. How you apply it, what way you apply it, and in what variety you apply it is completely your choice. Yeah. And get comfortable with cutting them up. Yeah, because Martin really got into his cutting. cutting well, up. it's the thing, isn't it? He shredded it at the end. He was just cutting you know, everything if up. You, if you don't cut it up, it's going to be exactly the same as somebody else's application of it. Yeah. Cut it same. up and make it your own. And then, you, you, then you, you're not going to go onto Pinterest and go, oh, that's like that one, but it's just a different colour. Or oh, that's like that, but it's this. Or oh, that's like that. No, yours won't be like that. Yours no, there be, won't be another one of this. Them. There won't be another one of this, but, you, well, there might be if you all do one. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but even then, it won't be the same because they'll cut it up differently. Yeah, they will. <laughs> they will. Or put it on differently. They'll cut it up better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, what was I going to say? That's it on transfer. So I'll do one more section of us working on the transfers. Then what I'm, I'll get over, round everything else, get the transfers on, sanded everything up, and then we'll get to our stamping. I am still undecided. I think I am going to go for something a bit like this, but I'm not 100% sure. I've got lots of choices here. I was looking for something. I mean, I even kind of thought of something like this one, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I had pondered putting some hearts in it somewhere. These are all things to come. I'm thinking back to my inspo and my mood board and the kind of things I had in it and the kind of things I wanted in it. So... So far, yep, it's all going in the right direction. Okay, so I want to do something with this part up top. So I've just cut this yellow flower out because it was in amongst all of this, which I'm going to use in a minute. So I started with getting, as I showed you, the little edges down here first underneath here and then work way up. Now, this back bit isn't attached to my furniture right now, so... Uh, if I look like I'm going at it a little bit silly, it's because I'm trying not to. It's just it's an easier way for me to film it for you guys. Then change hands. You gonna hold on? And I'll hold it. <laughs> Martin, you're not only throwing down Mul facts, but, but today you're like doing, you're holding furniture. Oof. Oof. 
Now, once we get up here, don't take it right up into the joint first. You're just kind of loosely getting up here because then you're going to work with this before it goes up. So this is the next section. We want to be going right across it first. And then you have to kind of turn your transfer stick at two different angles. So you're going under and do the front. And to the front. And basically what I'm doing with the top, oh God, cramp. Um, basically what I'm doing with this top part is I'm just bringing the design work from the bottom into the top part just because it makes it work better. Um, see what's happening here. Yeah, now I'm trying to, this is the next part here. So rub it with your transfer tool all the way along. Make sure that you always remember the edges because they're the parts that when you pull it away are most likely to pull off. I'm just going to change hands. You're going to change hands, Martin. Okay, no, you change hands. Do you want me to, would you like me to stop? No. <laughs> I think Martin deserves a big mention today. Why? For all the things you've done, you've commented and you've... <laughs> the thing is, it's not very often you can say things, but you actually have a, from a novice. And if you haven't watched Martin's video... Martin from a complete novice who had never put a transfer on before or done any other sort of paint techniques. I'd just never done them. Just with a little bit of help from me. I did not off camera do it. He did it. And Martin had never used transfers before. And they he are, did. They really are that simple. They really are easy. They're simple. Yeah, it's just, I think it's just a fear. I think it is as well. And then, I think it's a fear and the cost, you know. Yeah, it is definitely. And then I think. Once you get, you know, how to do it, then you can just start doing things like cutting them up, sanding them down, yeah. putting a design around them, making sure they're on some painted background that kind of sets the scene. Yeah. And then you're away. Yeah. That's it. And if you can do what Lil said as well in terms of sort of spreading it over two pieces, then instead of it being 50 quid's worth of transfer on one yeah. piece of furniture, it's 20, 25 uh, quid. Absolutely. I think that's what I've always tried to do. It's and brilliant. it doesn't matter how many pieces of furniture you sell. It doesn't matter what your business is like. You just, you have to make your business cost effective. If you're doing it at home and you've got all the money in the world, well, feel free. Use yeah. a couple of sets. but Knock yourself out. <laughs> but, you know, if you've got my permission, just go for it. But um, just need a piece to burnish that with. I'm actually feeling quite dizzy. Woo. You need to do this part. This part is one of the most important parts. Some people use a soft cloth. I tell you, if you buy a hocus pocus transfer, they come with little um, little white gloves, little soft gloves to burnish it on. They do, they they? do. feel like a snooker player. I had them, but then I think I made them into a dressing up costume. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what I did with them. But, I think you did as well. Uh, yeah. What are the kids? Uh-huh. I think it was a princess daisy costume was it i don't know right so we are saying that that there is on and staying on happy days um so what can you do with this section here so i want the white flower and i want this leaf so let's just take this out and I, I, I must memo to self as well i looked at the front and i stood back it needs a white flower on the front at some point because it is white in the design and i'm going to be doing white distress so so this is really, depends what you're working on at home, whether what happens with this, but I think this is what the one that I'm going to, and I can find a small, or will I take it to this edge? Yes, I think I'll do something like this instead. It's okay, Matt, and you don't have to hold it. I'm not going to be doing the whole transfer and the whole piece. I'm just showing them my position. sort of, just, just showing them my positioning. Now, if I had mask and tape right now, I could mask and tape that, but this is going to go here. I will probably cut my next one will be this blue one. I might put it up beside there because I don't want it. To, you, you don't want a whole row of them all trailed around like that. You don't. You want different, different sort of ways of making it look, you know, like different, something a bit different. So I'm going to cut this part up here. I think that's, um, I can maybe steal for, oh. That came off the back that's not good 
I can maybe steal from this. Another top tip, if you were to put this away today, but you wanted to keep it, what I do is I get a little bit of masking tape and I just tape it around the edges to tape it together with the back on it, put it back in the envelope and then that way you've got little pieces and parts again. I wouldn't just put them back in the thing because they come off and then they end up sticking to things and you're just wasting it. So there you go. I think, I think I'm just about finished with telling you all the things you need to know about transfers. Um... I can't think of anything. If anything comes up along the way, I'll tell you. But I'm going to, I've already applied my transfers to the sides. They need a bit of work. They need sanding. I'm going to put one on the top, but maybe just in this in this corner over here or that corner over there. Finish off these parts here because I want a few more pieces and parts in the drawer. And I'll show you how much I've got left over at the end. Okay. Okay, so the top's done. Uh, that is all I'm doing on the little drawers. I think that's all it needs and the front's done and it's all been sanded. I just want to show you what I've got left over. I've got a full sheet, nearly a full sheet. I've got one, two and I've got some pieces and parts. So I reckon probably I've got enough to do a medium small, a small cabinet or a few smaller, just smaller projects. So that's what I've used to do this whole big dresser. So this is another thing about transfers are not just like I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to say is, yes, use transfers, but make them work for your business, make them work for you. Um, it's not it's not all about just putting as much on as you can. It's about setting the scene. So we've first of all, we set the scene with all the texture, the paint runs, the colours and everything behind it, which all work with the transfer. We've done that. We've applied our transfer, we've applied it in pieces and parts, we've sanded our transfer back to make it look like it's part of the piece. We've done it across the board. That's what we've done so far. And we've shown how to use a transfer, best practice with transfers. Transfers. Now, you put your transfer on. This is the part where I, when I was saying is you really have to kind of like steal yourself. Because at this point in time, for those that just like it as it is, seal it with a top coat sealer. I use French chic tough top coat which isn't always easy for me to say but I'm getting better at saying it <laughs> you're much better you, at saying that I'll show you it at the end when I go to see my piece but if you're happy with your piece at this part and you're scared that anything you do now will spoil it because that's the fear isn't it but what I'm doing now is I'm adding my own pieces and parts to it because that way it really does set it apart from anybody else's work so and I was going to use some stamps, and I probably still will, but I'm also going to do a little bit of hand painting. And I think this is the thing that kind of starts to freak people out. They're going, oh, but what if I ruin it? If you ruin it, just wipe it quickly and don't talk about it. That's, that's probably what I would do. So I have Annie Sloan's Old Ochre, which is a creamy white, a really off white. I prefer it to white, white, white's too stark. And I'm trying to get it closest to this white here. I did come back, and may I add, and add a white flower here. It's just that... Uh, there will be white distress on it and there's white at the top and there's some white on the sides which means that it's there's, there was only this little suggestion of the white and I wanted to obviously bring the white back in. Now um, I'm not even going to use water for this part and this just looks like a little bit crazy nuts what I'm about to do but well I am going to come back and do some of this crackle on top of the flowers as well but right now I'm just going to do this. I'm going to start in the middle but it's going to work along it's just for the sake of filming this. I am going to do this and try and keep it neat. I didn't pick up the base brush as I decided to do this. A little kind of like think of a cake decorating a little fluted edge all the way along here. I am also going to do this little band on this bottom part here of the dresser. And this, and this floor part. Now I'm not going to go over my transfers, I'm going to start it here and work my way along. And when I get to here, I'm going to stop. This is just the first part I'm going to do, which is this little fluted band. You remember what I showed you in the first place, what my inspo was? I am just adding my own little parts to this. Uh, I always find with these things, you start and it always feels a little bit stilted when you start painting. But very quickly, once you get into it, because I can already feel it, your muscle memory kicks in. And you just kind of instinctively know what you're doing. It uh, doesn't have to be perfect. 
I'm going to do this. So I'm going to get on and I'm going to actually do this because this isn't really too much about painting. A lot of it is more um, about um, the transfers, but this is part of, you couldn't have a transfer video if you just applied a transfer. You have to have a transfer video and show it all in context as one, as one piece of furniture. And this is what I'm doing. Whether I'll put this little kind of fluted edge around anywhere else right now I don't know is up for debate I just have started looking at my I'll tell you what, where it is on my inspo uh, where was it and I thought uh, looked at it a minute ago and went can you see can you see these edges here I quite like that and it wasn't this heart that made me think about it it must have been something else I looked at but I put all these different images together and I thought this is what I want to do. I think it might have been the, just this red one with the small dot because I am going to put a dot in the middle of this with a Posca pen. But it, it's it's there, but it's not there. It'll become more apparent when it comes down the bottom. Whether we do it round and down here and then do some stamping, I don't quite know yet. But right now I've got quite a lot of work to do because I want to do this here, here, up the top here. And I probably will carry this little tiny band, oh, unfortunately for me. Uh, on the sides as well so it's audiobook time it's audiobook time for a while <laughs> until I've got this part done okay so I'm just getting Martin to show you I carried on that white fluted edge up the top around the tiny little drawers and as you can see I've only done it where there isn't transfer as if it's been put over the top I've done it on the where I said and I went a bit crazy and I did it under there and around. This is what I mean. I kind of wanted to frame it all off. So we've got this far into it. And now I'm going to be kind of uh, just working on this sort of edge here, this sort of side. So let's just kind of like let him get a seat. <laughs> well, just, just get down to where you yeah. are. Oh. So... What I'm doing now is I'm using the crackle stamp that I used at the beginning and I'm just making these work. Can you see I put the crackle on that white flower just here? I'm just making these kind of look like they're sort of aged as well. A little bit of crackle up in here. Just kind of, try not to go too fast, just kind of add in a little bit of crackle. I need to charge it again. Just It's just... Um, Again, it's just kind of aging it off a little bit. You don't need loads of it, just a little part. That's probably enough. I mean, doesn't you don't need to go crazy with it. I think it just kind of makes it... I really want to kind of get something up in here on that bit there. I'm going to try and get in a little bit closer so I can see it. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Just something like that. Just kind of adding some crackle onto, onto the flowers. Just to, that's what I'll be doing. Uh, it's kind of good once you've used all the ink and you stamp, you've just got little remainders left. Just kind of like, you don't need a lot of it. So yeah, just that's enough on that. I mean, I don't want to go crazy with it. So we're going to do that. This here is now dry. And what I'm going to be doing is what I said is, and this is going to take a while. So again, you just have to kind of bear with the process. I'm just using a, an acrylic paint pen. These are Posca's. And I'm just doing a black dot around in the middle of each one of the little kind of, <laughs> what are you laughing at? Uh, three hours later. I know. <laughs> I know. It take, I mean, this is the thing. This is what makes your furniture different than other. It's certainly the work that sometimes I think that goes into mine is, is just crazy. And, and I sometimes think, would anybody really notice? But I know they do. So that's okay. So as you can see, do, 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 it just gets a little bit repetitive and obviously a wee bit boring, but it's okay. It, I'm just going to finish because I've started all the way around this one here. So you can see that has, that has done another element. Now, put your lid back on your grey, whatever my lid on my grey is. I don't know, I'll put my black. Oh, there it is. Always keep your lids on your stays on, they dry up really fast. This said, this one here was the one that I used for the Christmas one and it just kept leaking everywhere because I overcharged it. But this time around, it's going to work in my favour, I hope. So this one, this stamp, this is from the Bohemia IOD stamp. And uh, 
At first I thought, do I just want that? But then I thought, no, I'll take both elements. So I'm going to run this across the top of here to here. And the same on the top of here and the same on the top of there. I don't know about this side yet, but we're only working on this side. So I'm just on the concrete floor. Remember, stamp on a, on a hard surface. And obviously my concrete floor isn't exactly the... It's not exactly the um, flattest, so... And I am just going to stick this on here like this. And with, oh, kind of shifted a bit there. I'm going to get the top band first. Give you a good chance to look at my lovely manicure. <laughs> <laughs> and then just make sure that you touch. I always think with this one, it's the little bits of the bottom. This one always reminds me of little people all in a row. I don't know why. Just obviously the way my brain works. Um, and now what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to kind of go round it, putting the stamp on it where I think it's going to add a little bit of interest. The thing is I knew by putting it on certain colours, it'll obviously look brighter on the yellow, darker on the blue. And that's what you want is a kind of worn look and it adds, it's adding another completely different element. So next thing I'm going to do is I think on here, just so you, so you know, I'm going to cross each of the tops of the drawers, but on here, I think I might go down round and around the edge of the door with this one i'll just do across here and with that one i still have something to think about what i might want to do in here but i might not want to do anything i might want to just come back with the white i'm not uh, i'm not 100 percent clear on the top uh, i might just do a band on the top of the dresser at the back on each shelf and i probably won't put any of this I don't think on the top I'm just going to leave the top as is we're kind of slowly getting towards the finish line I'm going to get on and do the stamping next then we're going to add a little bit of a palette knife distress just a little bit here and there with the colors I'm going to pink out pick out pink out see Freudian slip because I'm going to pick pink and which uh, I will mix up and I'll probably use Furl from Annie Sloan for the green. And those two will bring that together. But I think when you see the spots in this, I think when I stand back, I think I'm going to be, be quite happy. So you see what we've done. Although this week was transfers, we're adding all our elements now till we get to the end. Once I've done the palette knife, I think I'm going to go away and let it dry because it's always a bit thicker there. When it's dried, we'll talk through sealing, making sure the transfers are sealed appropriately and then I think my, what I might do is add a little bit of dark wax. So there we go. Okay, so I've done this little upside down person stamping around where I said I was and I've done up the top of the dresser. I didn't put the black spots on this, the kind of half circles around the drawers. I left those as is, but I did them on the top and that ledge there. On the sides, it's only got it on this side. I haven't finished it on both sides. And I'm going to do this stamping along the bottom so the sides are not too busy. Now, I've got my palette knife here and I've got a pink that I mixed up, which has a little bit of creepy pink and a little bit of Antoinette. And I've got some furrow. These are Annie Sloan paints. Now, I'm not going to do... I'm not... I mean don't know if you've been watching me from the beginning I used to go quite crazy with this but I'm not going to go mad so um, the reason why I'm applying it with a palette knife is it gives it better texture and it is not the same as when you apply it with a brush so maybe some of this here um, where you do it kind of is entirely up to you I just want to bring that up a little bit um, yeah Everything there, and maybe some of this here. Um, as I said, I don't, I don't kind of want to go crazy. I just want to give it another sort of another layer on top of a layer on top of a layer. If you know what I mean. I always think try and coordinate what color you're putting on on a color that will look quite good. So along this peach here, it looks quite it, it, it kind of really kind of add something. Um, maybe some of this coming in from the side here. As I said, it doesn't matter if you go over your transfer, that's okay. 
and I want to put pink up here so I'm just kind of predominantly I'm trying not to jump about too much for Martin so we'll do some of the sim along here so I'll give this a wipe um, so put on the rug. it's okay I've got something Martin I've got it right so we're on the pink uh, don't need a huge amount on a palette knife just probably about this much maybe even that's a little bit too much about that much so I want to put some pink up on here and I'm just going to go over the transfer like this. That's another thing you can do with your transfers that make them look like they are part of the piece. And some here and maybe some of this pink down the bottom. It's a kind of brighter, it's a more, it's not as light as the other pink. Um, yeah, so you can see what I'm doing now. I'm not, I'm not exactly kind of like, there's no rhyme or reason to how you do this. I quite like it when I've done one colour to put another colour up beside it. Um, that's just a personal sort of preference. Maybe bring some of this here. It's just, what it's doing is it's just giving it more sort of texture. I'll do the same up the top. I'm not going to go, as I said, I'm not going to go crazy. I'm going to be stopping soon because probably I think that's maybe enough. I just want to add a little bit of pink on this. This, in fact, I'll just do it so that, yeah, something like like that. More pink up here. And that's it. That's this is it. Now what I'm going to do, because this is slightly heavier is, and it's the temperature is kind of like getting colder here in Scotland. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on, I'm going to let it dry overnight um before I seal it. Um it's just then the temperature will be back up during the day, which means that if you seal in cold temperatures you've got a real fear of trapping a layer of moisture in. If you ever have cloudy sealer, that's what it is. And I am kind of going right up to the edge of temperatures that, you know, that isn't, you know, it's getting to the point. I was going to be staying in the studio studio over Christmas, but we've, over the winter, but we've decided we are going to move into the house and that will happen in the next two weeks because the temperatures will plummet here and paint won't dry. It's not good for the furniture. It's not good for the piece. You can't seal them, can't wax them. For all the reasons why. So I'll leave this till tomorrow now because it's heavier with the... Actually, do you know what I'm going to do as well? I've decided... I've just kind of linked back a bit. This pink is too bubblegum pink. I'm going to have to maybe put a light or white over the top of that right now before I go any further. Okay, so that's what you'll see. You'll see it, all the distress around it. These two sides, I'll just have the stamp in the bottom and the white bit up the top. And then tomorrow morning, we'll get it sealed. Where Matt and took my knobs off, these are ones that are screwed in. These need glued in, so it's another reason to leave it overnight. Um, fix these with wood glue and glue these back in so that these are all back in the furniture. Open my doors, sand off my edges, seal it, and then we'll get to waxing. Okay, sealing transfers. So you know everything there is to know so far about transfers. I use the same sealer all the time. I use a water. I use a water-based sealer. It's this sealer here. It's French Chic Tough Top Coat. Before this, I used to use Rust-Oleum Lacquer. These are the only two sealers that I know that I can 100% say do not affect a transfer. Um, I can only say this because obviously, if you live in different parts of the world, there's different sealers but obviously I think any although I've never used the products I think any of Debbie's products from DIY I think any of those top coat sealers work um I've just I've had people ask me questions I had somebody send me an email about um uh they used a transfer and I think they may have used a I can't really remember, but I think they said they used Big Mama's butter. They waxed that over the top of it and it ate through the transfer. I I'd sometimes do wax transfers. There's nothing, I don't want you to put off waxing your transfers. There's nothing wrong with it. It's equally, waxing is equally as good as lack as, as top coat sealer. They do the same job. I just put a tough coat on mine because... There's an awful lot sometimes going on with my furniture and I want it to be sealed in. But if I can, I will wax. I prefer to wax. It just feels differently. It just has a more buttery texture. But I use Annie Sloan's Clear Wax or Rust-Oleum Clear Wax and they work fine. 
again, I would imagine that any of Debbie, uh, the reason why I keep saying Debbie's products, I'm not sponsored by Debbie to say this, but her products are all natural with very few ingredients. So they will be fine with any of those kind of things. Um, I just want you to be kind of mindful that a heavy duty sheen varnish on top of a transfer like this, I wouldn't, I, I don't, I've never done it and I wouldn't recommend it. I, my, my sealers are always matte. Um, and I don't use heavy sealers, um, even though they're tough and durable. Um, be careful what you seal them with. But this isn't to say that you should be scared to seal them because obviously you have to seal them to protect them. But I would use a water-based, any, I think I can say any water-based top coat sealer and any clear wax without scent, perfume or anything else, just a clear all natural wax is what you should use on top of your transfers. Um, if you are doing a mirror and you want to seal it over your mirror, most people say, well, it's just, you know, wet cloth, dust free, you know, you don't, they don't bother. But what I'll sometimes do is get this product and just get a small artist brush and I will, and I'll seal it just to the halo, just to protect it. Um, mirrors, same with glass. Uh, any of those things will seal it in, but they're, they're, they they need to be sealed because they're, they're they're stuck on there. And I mean, with anything, if you sit and scrape them and scrape them and scrape them, you're going to scrape them off. But uh, but when they're on, they're on. As far as I'm concerned, I've never ever ever not once had a problem. Not once has any customer came back and said there is something wrong. So. Uh, just be mindful of that because it, um, it's always on the back of my mind now about, um, oh, I feel terrible. I can't remember the the customer's name. She's from Australia or New Zealand. New Zealand or Australia, New Zealand, I think. I think it might be Cathy. I'm not entirely sure, but she asked me about it and I was saying I really wanted to back away from some of the Dixie Bell products because I don't use them. So not because I don't like them, I just don't use them. And I, I'm obviously a Manny Sloan and that's it. Um, but uh, so that's just all I'm going to say about sealers. How did I seal it? I've already sealed this piece because you don't need to see me sealing. But what I do is, this was brand new when I when I started using it. Um, pouring my sealer into a takeaway tub like this. I normally pour about this much into the bottom. I put my sponge in, let it absorb a little bit. And then what I do is I scrape off the sides like this to make sure I've no excess on. And I wipe, wipe, wipe. I wipe around here and wipe across. I wipe down the edges. I pull out my drawers. I, you know, I do all the different things and I just wipe it. It's the easiest way to do it. It prevents a whole load of like, I think sometimes when you're using a brush, sealer can collecting pockets in areas of furniture and if it's if you don't catch it you've got a big white drip it will drive slightly milky it's not very nice whereas if you've got the sponge you can get in all of your areas two coats always two coats, coats of sealer maybe three if you're feeling jolly and as for wax put a coat of wax on you can then after 24 hours you can give it another coat of wax and you can keep repeating. I mean, really, in theory, I would leave it a week and then do another coat of wax. And if you want to do a further coat of wax, you can. You can buff wax in between. I never buff mine. I like it matte, but you can buff it with a cloth and shine it up. These are all things you can do once your, your sealer's on. So that's how I apply sealer. Now, I had intended to put a lot of dark wax on this, but I don't want to darken it down because I actually quite like the colours. So interestingly enough, and you will never ever see this, I'm going to try and pop a little bit of white wax, I think. So this is Annie Sloan's white wax. Now, the reason I can use white wax without having to clear wax is because I've sealed it, which means that if I make a great big boo-boo, I can wipe it off. It's already been sealed. And yes, I can apply wax over the top of my sealer. But if you use different sealers, I would just check with your manufacturer. I don't want to be starting to say that, yeah, this is fine. Go on, you know, just make sure. But as far as my two products, I will always use this as a sealer. I will always use it. It's just amazing. It's an amazing sealer. I know you, ha you can't get it in the States or a lot of people have said, I wish I could get it in the States. I know it's hard to get, but this is my sealer. And I'm obviously, this is, if I don't have any Sloan, I'll use Rust-Oleum wax. But um, 
So I've got a little artist brush here and I've got my white wax. I don't intend to do a whole hoo-ha. Oh, hang on, I'm just going to get my, my paper towels, which are over here. Oh, Matt, the lovely Matt is going to pass them over. So where am I putting it? I'm thinking up in here. So I'm applying quite a lot because I'm going to wipe it back in a minute. And then just, just wipe it back. I want it more in the sort of details. I don't want to make this, this piece white. Um, I think I've told you the story before, but I'll tell you it again. When I first started to get into waxing, I bought a, I bought a tub of white wax. And I'd done a beautiful piece of furniture. And I didn't realise that you had to clear wax first. Covered it all in white wax. And then uh, my piece was very muted after that. It just wouldn't come off. It was just <laughs> it was just stuck. It, 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 it was very unlike me because it was actually quite a bohemian piece. But um, it was a bit uh, unlike me near the end because it was, uh, it was very, uh, <laughs> it was very white. So... That's why I'm saying, you know, if you're if you're waxing and you want to add, I mean, you might do something like this and think, I think I'm going to add a little bit of dark wax. Well, that's entirely up to you. Or there's brown wax, there's black wax. You can make your own wax. You can see what I'm doing. It's not it's not hugely, you know, it's not in your face. This look, I'm just kind of like going around this. Oh, I'm kind of missing that edge there. I'm just kind of going around all the edges and then wiping it back just to kind of give a little bit of highlight. And that's actually what I'm doing. I'm just highlighting anywhere where I think it might need it. I'm just kind of making sure that it's kind of thick and thin. Just, you know, can you see what I'm doing? It's it's actually quite subtle for me, but the furniture isn't subtle, so we're okay. So I'm not going to do tons of this. I'm probably going to do a long down the bottom here. Um, I thought I'd use white because there's white details in the piece and I thought that'll kind of bring out see can you see the difference that makes? It just just makes a difference. It just kind of sits in the in the little grooves and you just just makes a difference. So I'm gonna get on and I'm gonna pick some some pieces and parts. I might go around my handles with it. Um something like this and see if I can kind of wipe it back a little bit. Just to give it a wee bit, it'll probably look a bit more, stand out a little bit more in the, on the darker wood. Anyway, I don't know what that is, but I must have touched it with a, with a piece of white, but I don't mind it. Sometimes you find interesting things. I mean, the, the thing is, I think by the, the looks that I do, sometimes I do find interesting things in my furniture, but I, I quite enjoy them and go, oh, well, I don't know what that was. So I'm going to get on, I'm going to do this, and then we'll get to staging. Okay, so it's finished. What did we do? We set our scene, scene set your scene for your transfers, really important. How did we do that? We meshed a whole load of colours together. We will revisit that Big Daddy brush. It was good, it was just not what I was looking for. Um, just kind of meshed it together. You didn't see me do that, but then I squished multiple squishes of water on it I let it dry I came back and did some drips I let it dry um, what else did I do after that we applied our transfer um, I showed you how to cut them up I showed you how to sh to make sure you know you've got the right amount for each section positioning keeping things to the side so the sides we talked about what they can go on mirrors glass fabric um i did a little bit of hand painting just with a script brush and some white paint which kind of makes everything else it makes this come out and that go back and that's what you're trying to do uh, i did some stamping just to put some extra design work because i had my own sort of mood board in my head I don't very often show you my mood board or my cho color choices and things but my mood board today for some reason the day I decided to show you was way off but but this is what <laughs> this is what I wanted it to look like so it's a bit kind of strange I obviously just keep, needed to keep going with what I wanted to do and that was just an exercise of getting lots of pictures together for no apparent reason so uh did the top as well so remember positioning top bottom something in the center Lots of interest with paint, but not not 
I never put um, transfers on the back of, of here because when the customer or yourself want to display things, it's very difficult when there's a whole load of pattern. Told you this multiple times. Once did a dresser, did everything, did the back, did everything. It was done. It was beautiful, but the only thing I couldn't put anything on it because everything I sat in it just fought with what was behind it. So keep these parts simple. Did it on the sides, made sure that we kept enough transfer. We talked about sanding them back, getting rid of the halos, making sure that they sit back onto the furniture. Colour choices, what colours to use, sealing, how to seal them, what not to seal them with. And really, that's been it. It's been exhausting. It's all about transfers and there's nothing more I can ever add about transfers now. Um, this is everything I probably know about them. So if you know other things, then that's that's great. But I think there's everything that, 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 that that's it. There is there is nothing else to know about them. Apart from, you know, maybe don't have moisture in your drawers and try to apply them. <laughs> Whoopsie. At least we're honest on this channel. I could have pretended and kept on going, but that's not very fair. Yeah, that... so, if, so if anyone ever says to you, I don't like transfers, say, ah, oh, watch, share this video with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because sometimes I look at transfers and they have that plastic. They've just been stuck on look. And that's the difference of what I'm trying to see to set your scene, apply your transfer, sand your transfer back, add other things, your own elements as well, because then there's a little bit of, hmm, is that or isn't it? Or is it the page paper? Or, you know, it questions the person, what, how was that done? That kind of thing. And it feels different as well when you sand it. If it's just non-sanded, it's very, still very shiny. Uh, so this is a good, good, good top tips. Uh, nothing really else to add about this. I have Matt and I have exciting news next week. Stay tuned. Next week's video and next week's video is a really good one as well. I thought completely out of the box. You're really going to think I've lost my mind. It's a good one. I'm already on it. Um, so uh, tune in for next week's video. Tune in because we've got exciting news and we want to tell you something. And I have been Lyle from Made by Marley. Um, if you've liked this video, please consider subscribing. That would be really useful. Um, sharing this video is also good. That helps push the content out. Uh, liking it, leave me a comment. I'm a bit behind on comments. I'm sorry. I've been incredibly busy. It's been busy. It's been yeah. busy. I will get to your comments. There's, they're starting to have a backlog. Um, I am going to get to the comments. Um Martin, do you have anything to add? No, thank you very much for watching. That's us. And yeah. we'll, we'll see you next Sunday. Bye-bye.